Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a maraca out of clay. First, we need to know what a maraca is. And this is a maraca. This was made in Mexico, and there's little beans inside here. So when you shake it, it makes sound like a musical instrument. So um, this is one of the most basic musical instruments that's found in um, Spanish countries all over the world. And not just Spanish countries, but that's where it is probably the most popular. So, um, yeah, so this is the goal. We're not going to have a handle on ours, and ours might be a little bit more egg-shaped, but it's going to make sound, and we're going to be able to play it like a musical instrument. So, here's some finished projects that I have. This one, um, notice it has a hole in it. It has my name carved around the outside. Um, it even has some texture around the perimeter, maybe for a little grip uh, when you're shaking it. Um, my two examples I have here, you hear that? Um, these two examples have not been fired. They're just air dried. And so um, I am confident that they will make a better, louder sound after they've come out of the kiln. But basically, um, this is what we're going for today. So, step one. Well, first of all, wait, we need to make sure we have all of our supplies. Ahead of time, you need to make these light, teeny like beans almost. I have my students make them about the size of your pinky just to make sure that they won't go through that hole that we have to create in our maraca. So anyways, these are our little beans. These need to be made ahead of time so that they're dry. You're also gonna need a board to make the ceramic on and a little cup of water, and I like to use a toothbrush. Any scoring tool will work just fine. All right, so, ready to get started. I have a big bunch of clay here, and the first thing I need to do is separate it into two equal parts. So I'm just gonna take it in the middle and kind of twist it and pull it. There you go, two equal parts. One part at a time, I'm gonna pat it into a ball. This is the same way that I know how to make a pinch pot. First step is to pat it into a ball. Make sure there's no creases. Be like a, like a baseball. There we go, okay? And those kind of cracks, you can just kind of rub away with your finger. All right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make both of them into a ball before I get started. So get all the patting out of the way. All right, there we go. I'm ready to start. So I'm gonna take my first pinch pot. I'm gonna take my thumb and press it in. And now remember, we need to pinch with four fingers like this. If you pinch with two fingers, you'll get spots that are really, really thin and other spots that are thick, and that doesn't have good consistency, and your project is likely not to survive through the, through the kiln. So you need to pinch with four fingers, kind of pulling your thumb up, pinching your fingers together. Make sure you're getting in there deep enough so that the section at the bottom is also the same thin thickness as the sides. Once again, keep rubbing out my little cracks that I have. I want it to be nice and smooth around the perimeter. My maraca, get rid of all my little fingerprints. Just kind of rubbing my thumb against it to try to smooth it out, okay? There we go. I have one done. Now I do another one. Brush your thumb in. Pinch with four fingers. Slowly going around in a circle. You're going to have to go around a few times because you're not pinching it all the way the first time. You're just pinching it a little bit each time, and eventually it will form into a wonderful little pinch pot. There we 
we go. I feel like my bottom is too thick, so I'm going around and I'm going to keep pinching it. I also think I have a little too much clay here. I could always get rid of some of it, but I'll just make a bigger maraca. We run in a circle. All right. Smooth out any cracks. Ooh, I don't really have any. Awesome. All right, there we go. Now notice it's not perfect, but that's okay, because I'm not done yet. So there we go. I have my two pinch pots. Now notice that one is smaller and one is bigger. That is exactly what I wanted. I do not want them to be that exact same size. I'm perfectly fine with one being small and one being big. And the reason for that is because when we go to join them together, they'll fit inside of each other. All right, so the next step is the beads. Take a few beads. You can add all the beads that you've made, but I'm gonna add just half of mine. And anyways, I'm gonna put them inside. Well, I guess it doesn't matter which one. Here you go, drop them inside there. There we go. And I remember, they've, they're dry, which is why they're a different color, but it's the same material of clay. And they need to be dry or else they'll stick to the inside of the little pinch pots that we have here. So you could say goodbye to those little beans because hopefully we will never see them again unless our project breaks. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the smaller pinch pot, and this is where the little toothbrush comes into play. And no, I don't use the toothbrush on my teeth. I only use it for ceramic projects. So dip it in the water, and you're gonna rub with the toothbrush in the water along the outside of your smaller pot. So find the smaller one and you're rubbing along the outside. The rubbing it with the toothbrush makes little tiny marks in the clay and it adds the perfect amount of water. Okay, and I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm gonna take my bigger pinch pot and I'm gonna do the same thing but instead of doing it to the outside, I'm gonna do it to the inside. Set that aside. All right, so now I'm ready to join my pots together. So I'm going to take the smaller one and put it inside of the bigger one. My bigger one is a little too big, but that's okay. All right. Now this is the part where I do the binding. I don't want it to go, I don't want it to go too far in, by the way. We want it just to be like on the edge. So you might have to kind of lay it down. Maybe you could even kind of roll it. Um, but you see this big pocket of space here? That's too much space, so I'm actually going to, like I said, I had too much, I'm going to have too much clay, so I'm just going to take some away. There we go. Perfect. So now we've got to cover up those holes. You see that binding right there? We want to smooth that out, so I'm going to take my thumb, I'm going to kind of rub so that those parts connect. Now keep in mind, if you're pushing as hard as you can, you're going to push all the way through your maraca, and then your beans on the inside won't have any space to jiggle around and make all that pretty sound. So we don't want to squish it. We want that air pocket in there. All you're doing is you're taking your thumb and you're kind of rubbing it upward so that this, this crease goes away. We're binding two pieces of clay together. If you try to just stick it together and hope that it sticks, it will not. Trust me. You've really got to do the slip and score, and you've really got to pull it and bind it really well. These little cracks, I don't like them, so I'm going to keep rubbing until they go away. 
If you find that your clay is really dry, you might want to put your finger in the water and kind of rub it, but mine is not too dry. So I'm just going to use the moisture that came from the clay naturally to get these two pieces to be smooth. Notice how I'm rolling the project in a circle. It kind of looks like almost a little soda can. Okay. Um, right now I naturally kind of have a flat top and a flat bottom and that is up to you as the artist. You can have it be flat or you can kind of squeeze it so it's more rounded like an egg. It's totally up to you. Oh, there's a crack, so rub it away. There's another crack, rub it away. There we go. Now, can you hear that? It's my little beans in there. This is going to be wonderful. So, now I have to do a very important step. If you were to put this maraca into the kiln, it would explode. All of them would explode and it would be a huge disaster and a waste of clay. And the reason for that is because there's an air pocket in the middle of this where the beans are moving around and all of that air needs a way to escape. And if it doesn't have a way to escape, it'll, it'll explode the whole thing. Um, but I'm going to give it a way to escape so that my project does not explode. And to do that, I'm going to take a wooden dowel. You should have one at your seat. I don't have one, so I'm just going to use a pencil. It works the same. And on the top or the bottom of your pinch pot, whichever, you're going to take your wooden dowel and you're going to poke it all the way through. So that you have um, a way for the air to escape. Okay? And remember how I told you to make the little beans larger than your pinky? The reason for that is so that they will not fall out of that hole that we've made. If you made your beans too small and they fall out of that hole, well, then your maraca won't make any sound. Okay? All right, there we go. So the next step. Um, the next step is optional, but d depending on the way that you wanted to paint your project, maybe you want to make, like, curves or zigzags that go around the outside. Maybe you want to make lines that go up and down. You can create a pattern. Um, we should probably think about Spanish art as we do this and use it as inspiration. Even this example here has lots of beautiful colors and it has lines that go across. It looks like they drew a flower on it. I think we should stick with pattern today, but you can make some texture. I actually have a knife here and a knife has a good serrated edge on it and I could use that serrated edge to make a pattern. There we go. And all I have to do is rotate my clay in a circle. This, also, this will also create some grip on your project so that when you're playing your instrument, it probably won't fall out of your hands and onto the floor. Um, so you can use all sorts of little tools. You can even use the top of the, the knife to like press in and create a pattern that way. You could use your dowel and make little polka dots. Just don't let them go all the way through. Um, what else could I do? I could use I could use the owl to draw little X's. I could I don't know. I could do lots of things. When you're working on your project, think of all the things that you could do along the outside and make your project unique. The last thing I have to do is I need to put a code on the bottom. I'll probably put it up here next to my, my dot here or my hole so that I know what project is mine because when everyone in the class is done, they're all going to look the same. So I need to make sure I put my name on it. But myself as your teacher, I'm going to walk around write the, your name or the code for you so you don't have to worry about that. But um, yeah, just make sure your project is clean and unique and you've got the beads in there and you have your hole and you have no big creases along the outside and then you're done. Ready to go wash my hands and clean up. Thanks for watching.